What's up guys? On this episode of the NRS Pro Series, we're coming to you from Bowie, Texas with professional horseman and clinician, Ben Baldus. today and we're going to be using this horse playing Motown. This is the horse I showed this year at the World's Greatest Horseman and finished fourth. He's been a really good horse. We've had him in training for a couple of years and we're going to talk about using this horse to gain control of his body parts, how to gain control of his shoulders, how to gain control of the steering and aligning his body, and how that's also going to help us as we start getting into our stops and our more difficult maneuvers of stops and spins using this horse to lay the foundation and the example. Then we're gonna finish up with a two-year-old and show you kind of the beginner stages on a two-year-old later on. As we get started with our body control, what I'm trying to feel for and what I'm looking at is this horse's body being straight from his pole to his tail. I wanna feel that I could use my legs and hands, my aids to help control this horse's body. I look at him in three pieces really, and that's the head, neck, shoulders, and hindquarters. And that kind of breaks them down into three pieces. To control the front end, I'm gonna use my reins and my hands to help control that. Shoulder is gonna be my reins and leg because it kind of goes together with the neck reining and leg control to position his shoulder. I'm gonna pick him up and move him away or pick him up and push him in. My leg and hands control the shoulders. As we move further back to hind quarters, my leg position back in position three helps position his hind quarters and yield his hind quarters if I'm wanting to move his rib cage out or yield a hind quarters or pick up a specific lead, I'll use my legs further back. As I start with this horse, what I'm looking at, we're going to start by walking a circle to the left and I'm going to pick him up and walk forward. And as I use this horse for all of our cues today, a couple things to remember is to always start with our cues as softly as possible. We want to be soft and have some feel and sensitivity to this horse, so we need to be soft with our cues. When I pick him up and ask him to walk a circle to the left, I'm going to ask soft as possible and light, asking this horse to move off the light pressure. If he does not respond, I'll increase pressure as if I'm climbing a ladder. The moment he responds, I soften and go back to zero pressure, giving her a reward and a release for doing a good job. As I walk forward, I'm going to pick my hand up, add a little bit of left calf, walking this circle to the left. Now I'm going to start with this circle to the left. As I do that, I'm adding my left leg and walking a circle towards the left as if I'm drawing a nice circle on the ground here. As I pick my hand up, I want the horse to soften the pole and flex his head and neck at the pole as I pick my hand up and soften it. This is teaching him to step forward and drive forward towards the bridle. Now if I want to stop him, I release my calf, releasing my heel and asking for several steps back. Notice I maintain pressure with my legs forward as he's stopping and backing. The moment he backs up three or four steps, I then release the pressure. As soon as I put my legs back in park or back in neutral, then this horse stands and he gets a release. That's how he knows he did the right maneuvers and did a good job. We're gonna move up a little bit more and ask this horse to do it at a jog. I'm gonna move forward, I'm gonna clutch for more speed. A little bit of lag asking this horse to move forward. Now I'm asking this horse to jog about a 10 foot circle here towards the left. I want to see his left eye. I want to see a little bit of his left side of his cheek as he's arcing around my left leg. I have my left calf just slightly pushing on him and I will increase the pressure to kind of move his shoulder to the outside. As this horse is moving his shoulder to the outside here, you're going to see him step left over right in the front. Whoa. As he's yielding his shoulder towards the outside, my leg is moving him over. As he steps left front over right front, stepping out, then I'm saying, hey, this horse is being soft. He's being light in his face. He's moving over. Then I'm going to give him a release of pressure. I'm going to stop, ask him for two or three steps back, and then give him that release again. Wherever you give your horse the release of pressure is, is that light bulb moment for him. It's kind of like, oh, I did the right thing. And that's how he starts learning. So it's important 
that if they do the right thing, you go ahead and take a second, get your back up, let them rest, let them sit there, let them know that they did the right thing and it was correct. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the right. It's important that we do the maneuvers on both sides of our horses. What you'll find is that perhaps your horse approaches a barrel and kind of leans in the right shoulder. Okay, they're leaning in. Or maybe they're dropping their shoulder to the right. We're gonna do this exercise both ways. Circling left, circling right, asking him to yield his shoulder and soften his face. And it's important to feel that they're balanced on both sides. All horses are right or left-handed and tend to lean one way versus the other. I'm gonna do this on the right side to help balance him. And let me show you that. Of my right calf near his shoulder. That asks him to pick his shoulder up, move it to the outside. While I'm looking to see the right eye, I'm looking at his right cheek. I'm picking my hands up, asking him to soften his face. There we go. There's the look I'm looking for. My neck rein is slightly across the left side of his neck, cueing him to turn his neck towards the right. Whoa. My feet release. As my feet release and go forward, that's his cue to back up several steps. Then he finds the release of pressure. Now from here, we're gonna go into jogging both circles a little bit more neck reining and working on that stop a little bit more. All right, now that we've softened our horse on both sides, it's not uncommon to find that one side is stiffer than the other. As you're doing that, focus about 70% of your energy on the stiffer side. If his right shoulder is stiff, focus 70% of your time during your warm-up on softening that side. Moving his shoulder away from your leg, softening him in the cheek, softening him off your snapple bit. Focusing 70% there will help balance that horse. Now moving along on this one, we're going to start getting into some steering on this horse. Using our romels and our neck reins to teach the horse to steer. Now as we've gone both ways in that circle, we've softened him right, softened him left. Now I'm going to start doing a little bit of a serpentine or a figure eight, teaching this horse to change the direction that he's looking off of my rein hand. So as I get ready to steer the right, I pick my hand up, I move it towards my right hip pocket. I want this horse to change his bend and then look to the right. We're going to go to the left, pick my hand up, move it towards my left pocket, asking him to move his shoulder and move to the left. When I want my horse to go forward or maintain a straight line, it's important that my hands stay in neutral position. As we talk about our legs in neutral, our legs are straight down, my hand is also straight down this horse's neck. That tells him to go forward. Now, if I move my hand towards my right hip pocket, that tells the horse to move towards the right. As he moves towards the right, if I apply my leg pressure, pushing him forward to his face, then I have an opportunity to bridle him up or collect him. Notice I'm using my legs and pushing him forward and flexing at the pole. That's teaching him to drive forward. Now, if I do the same maneuver, that I pick my hands up without my calves on him, no leg, I just pick my hand up. That should always mean stop. And that's the best way to keep your horse from being confused. You don't want them to confuse softening for stop or vice versa. So if you're gonna soften your horse, you wanna use your legs as a wall on each side pushing them forward. Your right leg, your left leg is a rail. You're driving them forward. As you're driving them forward, then you can then pick your hand up and lightly drive them to the bridle, pushing their body forward. This horse is exceptionally low headed. Not every horse is gonna be that low. It's completely normal if their head is slightly above their withers as they soften the pole, that's okay. Where emphasis is picking their back up, picking their withers up, using our legs to push this horse forward. Let me show you at a jog how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna steer towards the left. I'm gonna ask him to jog this figure eight. And I'm gonna apply my legs. I'm gonna steer to the right. I look right, my hand moves right. Now I have my right leg, my right calf pushing the horse to the right. As I prepare to steer left in the serpent hand, I look left, I guide left. I have my left leg pushing him forward to the bridle. Now as I get ready to stop him, I'm going to release my leg. Whoa. Asking him to hustle a little bit more in this backup. 
as this horse gets more um, warmed up, I'm gonna start asking a little bit more performance out of him. I'm gonna start asking him to give me a little bit extra energy in that backup. The better your horse stops and backs up, the better he's gonna stop. If his mind is thinking the release of pressure comes after I've hustled back, then he's gonna put more effort into it and more energy into it. Let me show you as we start going there. Asking Rio to jog, pushing into his face. My calves are driving forward, soft and light. I like that. Whoa. As I whoa, I maintain my legs forward. If he starts slowing down, like right here, he's slowing down. If he starts slowing down, I'm going to increase pressure with my legs. I want this horse to think about the backup being the release. So they learn from the release of pressure. If I take the pressure away when he's backing up fast, then he's gonna think that's the right answer. If he's slowing down or being lazy, I'm gonna first pluck and then wave my leg, maybe even using the inside of my calf to kind of bump his shoulder. The increased pressure teaches him to move his feet faster. If you want your horse to back up faster, use your voice and your feet. Ooh. We all have a tendency to want to pull a horse back, but the harder we pull on our bridle reins, the more they're just going to lean on us and lay into our bridle bit. So instead of pulling, think about using your feet to move his feet. It's really important. Give him a verbal cue first, and then your feet move his feet. As soon as he's hustling back, I'll put my legs right back in the neutral position. Ooh. And tell him, stand still. When I put my legs back and say, whoa, that's the stand still cue. That's a good boy. That's the right answer. That's the release of pressure. And they start looking for that. They start looking for that release of pressure and that desire to do better. The better the backup is, the better our stop's going to be.